have you ever decided to buy something because it was the least expensive version and you just wanted to save money, but in the end, you ended up actually spending more with replacements because it wasn't good quality, whereas if you just bought the thing that was a little bit more expensive at the time and much better quality, you actually would have ended up saving money? This was definitely me. So on today's Money Article Monday, I found an article called 17 Items that people who know the value of money try not to save on. I thought this would be very interesting to see what this article says that people who know the value of money don't want to save money on. But if you are new here on Money Article Monday, we pick an article or a blog that relates to money and we chat about it. These open up some of the best conversations. I also on this channel am documenting our journey to paying off our mortgage by the year of 2024 and just ultimately being financially independent. Along the way, I give you tips on how we save money and live a simple life. So if any of that interests you, make sure you click that subscribe button. So this article came from thebrightside.me. 17 items that people who know the value of money try not to save money on. And it starts off, and I have no idea who wrote this, but as always, I will link the article down below for you to read it in its entirety. I won't read all of it. Um, since childhood, we've learned that saving money and spending reasonably can help us cope with financial problems in the future. But the saying, buy cheap, buy twice, is still very true. There are certain items that you definitely shouldn't save on. At Brightside, we put together stories from people who know this notion to be true. And as it turns out, we often make mistakes by saving on some seemingly simple things. So I thought this was an extra interesting article because what they do is they list these things and they had other people, I think they took it off of Reddit. Again, you can link it down below. They took comments and of people and their stories and why they don't or why they save money or didn't save money on this particular item. So it gives us a much broader perspective than a normal, typical money article Monday. Number one are sunglasses. Cheap sunglasses just open up your pupils to take in more UV light that should have been filtered through better lenses. However, paying a fortune for expensive sunglasses isn't something I support, but buying cheap sunglasses isn't worth the risk to me either. On a previous video, I did a video on expensive things not worth the money. And one of the things that I listed was designer sunglasses. And several of the comments underneath that were, that is not true. Designer sunglasses or, or sunglasses you should spend money on because you're protecting your eyes, etc. Not the same thing. Designer sunglasses and quality sunglasses, two separate things. So spending money on a pair of Gucci or Louis Vuitton or whatever kind of sunglass, yeah, it might have good lenses, but you're paying also a lot more for that name brand on the side logo. I do absolutely agree about paying more for polarized lenses. And for years, I bought Maui Gym. But then one day, I bought a pair of Maui Gym. I think I was like 22 years old. And I spent $250 on it, which at, two, at, at 22, I shouldn't have been spending $250. I should have researched a better. Maui Gyms are great. But with me and my dropping of things because I'm clumsy, not. So I needed to find a better polarized sunglass for less so I wouldn't waste money. Anywho, put the sunglasses on my head. It wasn't a few days after I purchased them, but they fell off my head and got scratched. Yeah, that was a waste of money. So I have since, I've had prescription sunglasses for my eyes and polarized. I always get polarized because there's just a difference when you look through those lenses. And no, I don't recommend cheap sunglasses and I absolutely recommend saving um, not, not buying cheap sunglasses, but I wanted to show you guys, and they, I wore them to the pool yesterday, so they've got water all over them. But these are my sunglasses. They are polarized, and these are actually, I got off of QVC. They are the brand um, Privé Revo, uh, where, where would it say that? It used to say it somewhere. I've worn them forever and ever, but they are not, um, they are not, um, subscri subscription? No, prescription. <laughs> They're not prescription, but you could easily take the frames and have your prescription lenses put in them. Um, 
but they are polarized. And I think the company is um, Jamie Foxx, you know, the comedian actor guy, and some other people came together to make less expensive but high quality sunglasses. And they have tons of designs. I'll link some of them down below. Um, but I think these were 30 bucks. They are so lightweight, such good quality. The lenses are amazing. And I know lenses. I had LASIK eye surgery when I was 22. It didn't last, by the way. I still have much better vision, but I have to wear glasses now. And I think that started about seven years after I had it. However, since then, my eyes have just, the sun, I can't even, on a cloudy day, my husband makes fun of me, but you know what? If nothing else, I mean, it irritates my eyes, the sun does, but also wearing sunglasses helps protect against sun damage here. I don't have very many wrinkles for being 37, but I'll link these down below if you're interested. The next item are jeans. This says, I got back into jeans I was wearing 10 years ago in grad school. And I'm waiting for one of my students to tell me how awful they are, but no fading, no rips or stretching. And they're actually short enough for my legs. So I don't walk over them back the back of them. Remember those days when you walked over the back of your, your pants and you saw people, it was dirty and gross and crusty, even though it just been washed and you know, the strings hanging down. Anyway, I don't care if I'm out of style. I love this, especially with jeans. Oh my gosh. I, for the longest time bought cheap jeans and not that my jeans the brand that i buy now are expensive but they certainly aren't from walmart or target and yeah those these places might have good jeans now but i i don't know because i'm not even attempting it anymore because jeans honestly the most irritating thing to me is you know losing their shape throughout the day or fading so badly or just after you wash them they just you put them on for a few hours and then they completely lose their shape. They're not flattering whatsoever. So I found, and I've shared these before, the democracy, um, democracy, what are they called? Hang on. These are, I have several pair. Democracy denim, absolution, that's what it's called. Um, let me show you. They have this stretchy, it's almost like a legging. It's not a legging, it's jean, but it's very stretchy. And this part is just so comfortable and it keeps your, it keeps on your hips. Now, most of the ones they make are skinny jeans, which that's the kind that look the best on me. Um, and that's the kind I'm going to keep wearing, but I've, I've worn these for, I think these are three years old now and I've worn the mess out of them. Um, and they look great, but so these are usually, I think they retail for about 65 to $70, but I always find them for around 35 to 40 because I can always find a sale on them. So if I can find them on sale, I will link them down below as well. And I usually find these at a department store. I think Amazon does sometimes carry them, but I find them at Belk and Dillard's, which are local department stores. But these are a couple of pair. Jeans are definitely something that I do know, I no longer waste my money on. So let's see what else. There's a couple other comments on here. She says, cheap je jeans don't bend <laughs> and move with you the way a high-end brand does that's made with flexible and breathable material. 100% agree. Now, do I think you need to go out and spend $150 on jeans? No. Um, you need to go and test some jeans and get over the thought that you have to buy a ton of them you only need a few a couple good pair of jeans honestly um let's see expensive jeans can make your hips look so much better when you're 18 you don't care what you wear but when you're 35 the difference is quite substantial <laughs> i don't know when i was 18 i cared what i wore too and back when i was 18 you remember what was in style the low rise uh boot cut and flare leg the really, really ultra low rise. When was that ever flattering? I mean, I was not Britney Spears or Christina Aguilera. I don't know what I was thinking. I can immediately distinguish expensive jeans from cheap ones. Expensive jeans won't form ugly bubbles after long periods of sitting. That's what I mean, ugly bubbles. I think it's a good way to describe it. Yes, they'll stretch, but the cotton fabric will make the stretching look nicer than on cheap jeans. Expensive jeans wear out also but it is a more noble manner without turning into a miserable rag. <laughs> the next one are bras. Yes, mm -hmm. I've learned that lesson too. 
Let's see what this, this article says. I have quite a big chest and was wearing cheap bras for years that didn't fit properly. Since two, 2015, I have been getting them all from one particular specialty shop. They're not cheap, but the quality is great. They fit like a glove and they're gorgeous. The next comment says, I worked as a bra fitter for five years and I would say that 75% of women are fitted wearing the wrong bra size, bra size when they came in. Wearing a good quality bra that fits can honestly change your life. I am sorry, but wearing an uncomfortable bra, there are not many things that are you know, more uncomfortable throughout the day. The fact that we have to wear these things all the time anyway, wearing uncomfortable or underwire, I'm gonna throw up a picture of the ones that I found. I finally found these bras at Nordstrom called True, from True & Co. And I'm certainly not gonna pick it up, mine up and show you because that's awkward. These are amazing. They're not underwire. Now, if you're anything bigger than a, um, I'm a 34B, if you're anything bigger than that, it's possible that it, they're not supportive enough, all right? But if you're smaller than me, all these are great. Um, they, I do, they're just comfortable. It's like wearing nothing. I have never in my life found something that I love better. But, you know, even if you have a larger chest, going and getting fitted, going and spending a little bit more money on your bras and taking care of them, washing them properly. The fact that we have to wear these things all day long and we end up buying them so cheap doesn't make sense. We need to spend a little bit more money. So I definitely agree that this is one thing that people who know the value of money do not save money on. Now I am not gonna read all of these, so I'm gonna skip around. If you want to read the full article, make sure you check it down below. The next one is dishwashing liquid. Yes, I agree with this one as well. The article says, I bought an expensive dishwashing liquid that comes in a sprayer bottle that just sits on the dishes. I sprayed some on a dish that I'd roasted vegetables in the night before. Let it sit while I made a cup of tea and when I rinsed it, it was 95% clean. I honestly couldn't believe it. Well then why didn't you, dear whoever, reader, put what it was so we could check it out? The next one says, my wife and I used to buy a dishwashing liquid of a certain brand all the time. One day, the store ran out of this brand, but had a more expensive one on sale. That little bottle has already lasted twice as long as the previous one. So a situation where they had to buy a more expensive brand because the store didn't have it proved to, to them that actually it was more expensive, but it was cheaper in the long run. This happened to me. We bought, um, a Kirkland brand, and I'm sorry, I don't know what it was, but it was a Kirkland brand dishwashing detergent, or not dishwashing detergent, dish soap. Yes, dishwashing liquid. Um, like, we, you hand wash, right? It was like water. It, it. I have a sponge. I love the Scrub Mommy sponges. Those are my my jam. Those are the best sponges that we love. That's one thing I will also spend money on is a good sponge. But I would put the dishwashing liquid on the sponge and it would just roll right off. <laughs> there was no consistency to it. It was just water. I was so, I told my husband, don't ever buy this again. And it was miserable having to go through it and use it. It was such a waste. So we won't be buying that brand again. The next one is laundry detergent. I used to buy the cheap stuff thinking I was saving money, but I was simply wasting it. They're so watered down and don't clean as effectively as the name brand. And there's no lingering scent of detergent, which I prefer. So this prefers, person prefers the length, the, the smell of the Tide. I bought, the other one says, I once bought the cheapest laundry detergent at the supermarket. It was awful. It dyed my whites blue. That's not good. And the smell was so strong and permeated everything around it. Never again, better to make my own or splurge a bit. Um, yeah, so with laundry detergent, um, I've done a lot of frugal videos and a lot of people have said, you know, even if you get like a high quality, which I obviously you, you might want to do, watering it down or using less than the recommended amount is better anyways. I mean, are you a construction worker and your clothes are completely covered in dirt, asphalt, uh, roofing material, etc., then you might need to use the full-fledged, you know, amount that is recommended. But most of us on our daily activities, if you work in an office or you just, you know, stay at home, your clothes aren't actually dirty. You know, they may have, you know, if you're working out, sweat smells, stuff like that. 
but they, do they really need the full on um, huge amount? So you could water it down yourself. I bet it's similar to like the dishwashing liquid, whereas it was just completely watered down and not thick at all. The next one is winter coats and shoes. This says a winter coat, winter boots are so worth the investment. You could get four or five or more good winners out of this investment. I used to buy cheap clothes, especially coats. As a, as a good one can be costly, but a really warm waterproof coat for winter makes the commute a little bit easier and life that bit cozier. Um, do you guys agree, those that live in uh, colder climates? Here, it really doesn't get, so it gets around, the coldest would be high 20s, low 30s degrees Fahrenheit. That would probably be the coldest, and that's usually in the morning. And so there'll be some days where it'll extend into the high 30s, but most of the time I'm not out in that anyway. So I don't need a heavy coat or heavy clothes. More often here, it's about layering because it'll get warmer throughout the day. But I do agree that, you know, winter, I don't need heavy winter items, so I don't need to spend a lot of money on them. But on the same token, I do agree about the high quality for something you are gonna use a lot, such as like a bathing suit. For years, I wore the cheapest bathing suits and they would peel and they would stretch out and not look good. And then I ended up buying, I think I spent $130 on this bathing suit, but I am now on my fourth year of wearing it. Obviously, if I had spent, what, $25 a year or $30 at this point on a cheap bathing suit, you know, it would have been, it's obviously better for me to have this bathing suit that's a great classic style. The color looks great on me. It fits me like a glove and I don't have to worry about it peeling. So that was beneficial for me. But if you are in a warmer climate, do you guys agree that um, winter clothes and shoes are something that you shouldn't skimp on? The next one are athletic shoes. I definitely agree with this one and have a story. But let's see what the article says. I, I started a marathon train. I started marathon training with a cheap $20 pair of sneakers I bought at a supermarket one day. The three mile runs made me feel miserable and I noticed a hole slowly growing. I finally went to a running store and got measured for the correct shoe and picked out some ex an expensive pair of high quality shoes. I ran 10 miles the other day and felt amazing. They make a world of difference. The next one is I made a terrible mistake when I decided to take part in a six mile run on impulse. Was supposed to do a two mile walk wearing cheap basic sneakers. My feet and knees hurt for a week. I agree. I got into um, kind of more jogging running probably, I think it was, let me go back, 2013 or into 2014 and you know, wore the cheap sneakers that you'd go and you know find wherever until I actually went to a running store and got measured. So my shoe size, like a normal shoe is eight and a half to nine. And I went to the shoe store and they put me in a size 10. I was, I was like, ah, my foot's not that big. It worked. It worked. They made me go outside to determine how I ran, you know, if you were a duck runner or a, a penguin, if your feet are duck or penguin, that's what I mean. And you can, you'll do this now. Ever since then, I look at people's feet and I see if they're penguin or they're duck. My daughter's a uh, penguin um, and my husband's a penguin. I'm a duck. Uh, meaning my feet kind of go like this when I'm walking or running. Um, I don't know what that has to do with the type of shoe, but they put me in a pair of Asics and I was obsessed. I, no, they put me in a pair of Brooks shoes and they were uh, 150, 175, maybe more than that. Loved them, they were great. I went back because they were a little too heavy. So they weren't perfect. And I actually got this pair of shoes um, and I've had them ever since. This is my pair of Asics, what they were called, Dynamic Duo Max. I'm sure you cannot get them anymore because again, this was 2014 so this has been seven and a half years of use and abuse now i do not run everywhere every day they would probably definitely be torn up there was two years in that time frame that i did nothing um but i kept them and i keep them in great condition they have been absolutely amazing and they were probably again 175 i still wear them to this day i wore them yesterday morning and they look great so buying a good pair, going and actually getting, just like a bra, measured 
for shoes, running shoes, because what happens when you're running is your foot swells and you need a little bit more, the way they explained it, is room to move around. I'm sure some of you are runners and understand this, but I actually used this to do high intensity interval training. Um, I went and did the Cooper River Bridge in Charleston, 10K with those shoes. And there's just a big difference. Your, your feet don't hurt. When your feet hurt, you obviously can't keep going. So I certainly agree with not saving money on shoes for working out or running. The next one is duct tape. And I think duct tape is actually the name brand, but tape in general. Um, this says, for some time, I was thrifting and reselling online, mostly electronics. I made the mistake of buying a huge pack of off-brand packaging tape instead of a name brand and ended up throwing it, oh, the whole lot away. I think I made it through about four feet of a roll and it was so shoddy that I decided I was better off eating the cost of the new tape than risking an item getting damaged in transit. Say, you know, you, the tape that you try to pull off, especially the not duct tape, but packing tape. And it keeps, you know what I'm saying, you can't get the full thing off because it's so thin. <laughs> or this is a thing, the thing with uh, masking tape too, or wrapping, gift wrapping tape, that it's just, you can't even cut it on the thing because it's just made so weird. I absolutely I always buy like Scotch brand tape because otherwise it's just a waste. The next one I actually don't agree with, but it says hair products. I switched to a, the shampoo of an expensive brand a couple of years ago and I will never go back. I buy a large bottle every six months or so and my hair is so much healthier. It's worth every penny. The next one is as a guy who started to worry about his hair, I refused to use the four guys brand. I spend the $3 extra dollars and it just lasts as long. Smells way better and you can see the difference. Plus, if you're surely doomed to be bald like me, <laughs> you may as well take hold on and long, hold on to it as long as possible. I don't agree with this. Now, I, there are different texture of hair, obviously, and there's, I've tried pretty much every brand of shampoo and conditioner, cheap to high end. You know, Pantene to Olaplex. And Pantene, the basic Pantene moisture or volume, um, I've listed those before. I'll try to find them and link them down below, are what I use. And ever since using those, I've tried the others to see if they made a difference, and they didn't. They weighed down my hair. They made it extra oily. It didn't get rid of the frizz. So the Pantene, honestly, has been the absolute go-to for me. So I don't know that it's necessary that you have to buy a high-end or spend more money on that, but you might have to try out different brands, low-end, medium to high, to find what works for your hair type. The last one I'm gonna read are tights. I don't even wear tights anymore. Those things are miserable. Talk about a bra being miserable. Tights are miserable to me. But this is cheap nylon tights. Tear awfully fast. It's much better to buy a pair of expensive ones. Not only are they more durable, but they're also more comfortable. According to the dress code, I am obliged to wear tights to work at all the time. Really? I bought cheap ones and saw no reason to spend money on expensive pairs because they tear so quickly. But it was enough for me to try expensive tights just once to understand how wrong I was. Their quality is much better and they last a long time. I don't, uh, what jobs require you to wear tights? I, okay, like a ballerina, maybe, right? I don't know, tights are uncomfortable, high quality or not, so I'm not buying tights. And again, I'm clumsy, so talk about snagging them. Yeah, it doesn't matter how expensive they were and it would irritate me even more to have the expensive pair on and snag them, right? So again, there are more in this list, so make sure you check out the article down below and read them. I thought this was interesting and certainly fun. What is something that, as a person who understands the value of money, that you choose to make sure you do not save money on? Put it down in the comments below. I would love to read it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you back for more videos.